The past few days have been wonderful. Our little home is floating safely in the harbor of Palermo, and we've spent our days visiting ship chandleries, making life-changing upgrades to the boat, and getting lost amidst the winding passageways of markets which have existed for centuries. Palermo is a city with a crumbling grandeur and a confusing mixture of monuments which stand like the imposing ghosts of a war-torn past. Palermo has been, at different times, Roman, Arab, Norman, Greek, French, German, Spanish, and now Italian. But throughout all of the conquerings, all of the wars, all of the poverty, it has always remained Sicilian, defined by a curious combination of lethargy, an eye for beauty, and a strong culture of living for today, since tomorrow is always uncertain. Welcome to Palermo. I'm Aladino. I'm both Swiss and Italian, and a boat builder by profession. And I'm Maya, a Canadian artist and sailor. This is our home, Magic Carpet. She's a Vinda 32, though she's only 28 feet long. And four years ago, she fell 20 feet off a crane onto concrete. Insurance wrote her off, but Aladino bought her, fixed her, and now she's our home. Our mission? To sail around the world as slowly as possible. The first day we arrived in the harbor, we spoke to a few locals about what to go see in the city. They usually listed the normal monuments and churches to go visit, but they also told us to spend some time trying to get a feeling for the place. At first glance, Palermo is dirty, noisy, and crowded, but we kept hearing about the unique spirit behind the rundown streets, and so between small boat improvement projects and lots of video editing, we took time to roam the streets in search of that essence that the Palermo locals seemed to know so well. this nice quiet little road up here Can you go and explore? So we met a guy on a Pacific sea craft uh, down at the dock and he told us about Palermo and he told us to come check out this small little garden in the middle of the city mm. and there's these trees I'm not sure what they're called in English Ficus. Picos in Italian. Mm, I don't know. Sounds like Latin. Maybe. It, yeah. yeah. Anyway, they kind of look like mangroves and they're just so impressive and so beautiful. Yeah. And it's such an oasis in the city and especially so rewarding to just sit under a tree after spending so many nights on the boat at anchor. It's quite lovely to experience a different kind of nature. eventually left the garden, meandered along the main road, explored some small streets, and found an artsy little bar where we could sit outside and watch people passing by. We ordered two drinks, there was no menu, but the waiter came by, took our flavor preferences, and had the bartender create custom creations for us both. This is what's so unique about Sicily. While you often can't count on the government to be free from corruption, the one thing you can count on is eating and drinking very well, and at a price point about half of what you'd pay in our respective cities of Vancouver or Zurich. And so we sipped our drinks, played cards, talked lazily about anything that came to mind, and watched the theater of the street pass by. So far, I felt like we were fitting right in to Sicilian culture. onto the main street and there's a parade going on for this patron saint. I guess it's a very Catholic holiday. Palermo has a patron saint called Santa Rosalia, and it was her day to be celebrated. Prayers blasted from loudspeakers and a church procession walked down the main road. They're playing these prayers or chants. 
headphones on the loudspeakers all down the street. Look at the moon. Casino vibes. Street food Italy. The in the signs of a meal. And the grilled stuff. The day grilled something different. Aubergine, champignon, artichoke, onions. Down by the water, there were countless tents filled with smoky barbecues selling all manner of party food. After being jostled by crowds, nearly run over by Vespas, and our lungs filled with more barbecue smoke than air, we returned to the boat tired and completely happy. Aladino is already outside and he made fresh squeezed orange juice from all the oranges we had on board. I made not look fresh, but I slept really good. <laughs> we slept so well, it was really amazing. And uh, we're very glad to be in a harbor right now. The sky is very gray, there's a lot of wind. You can actually hear the wind whistling overhead. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can in the microphone, but... Yeah, I think outside it's not very um, comfortable. No, because here it's already protected because we're kind of in a natural bay and it's still quite windy mm -hmm. here. So the sun actually just came out, but the sky is still really gray, so it's creating this very odd, stormy atmosphere. But yeah, we're just slowly getting ourselves ready for the day. We've got a few boat things we need to get, so we're going to a ship chandlery first, which of course we're going to show you, and then just see a little bit of Palermo. This is the fifth largest city in Italy. It's the capital of Sicily, so I think there's a lot to see here. It's been insanely hot here, and it was time to buy a fan, along with a few other odds and ends that Aladino needed for the boat. We made it to the ship chandler. Very busy store, but well equipped. Wondering how it could go so wrong, but you didn't call for We are returning back to Magic Carpet to drop off everything that we bought. It was fairly successful. We got yeah, a totally. fan, which we've been wanting in all this hot weather. Actually, today is really nice weather, but it's, in general, it's been so hot, so it's going to be very nice to have a fan in the boat. Totally. We also got some alcohol for our stove, um, because we have an alcohol stove now, which is which, fantastic. Actually, we discovered that we, tr uh, we use oregonol now. Um, mm -hmm. um, I think it might be a little bit different to alcohol. Yeah. Uh, but it is a little more powerful. Um, I mean, not that I've tested and it. And it burns really clean. But it, it burns leave clean. Soot on the pans. Which that's is super the most nice. important step. It costs a yeah. little bit more, but um, when we find it, I think that's worth it. Yeah. Um, and what else did we get? Oh, we got a contact spray cleaner, which I wanted to have uh, just in uh, with my things. Yeah. Just for some electrical maintenance. We've been having a problem with the switch panel on our fridge. And we think maybe we'll be able to solve it with this? We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> The afternoon passed by quickly with some video editing. Aladino installed the fan, and then before we knew it, it was late afternoon and we got ready to go out. Such a nice breeze. It's a really strong fan, which is perfect. Oh, blow the man down, goodies, blow the man down. Give me way, hey, blow the man down. Eh, che orario fate quando uscite a pescare di notte? E ho sentito che il mercato è qua dietro, vero? Ok. Solo il mattino però, giusto? Più o meno dalle 4 fino alle 6. Ok, allora domani diamo un'occhiata. domani no. Perché? Ah, quindi non, non esce... Ho capito. Ho capito. Ho capito. Ho capito. Ho capito. Quindi allora forse un altro giorno. Ok, grazie. Ok. Buon lavoro. Seems like there's a fire. Oh. 
It seems like things are in turmoil. A new emergency vehicle is showing up every few moments. And uh, people were ducking under the barricades because they were like, oh, we don't need to pay attention to these barricades. And then the police showed up and started yelling at everyone ducking under the barricades. Anyway, we're going to continue on. It's difficult to spend any time in Palermo without hearing mention of the Mafia. Just now, Sicily is beginning to shake away from the Mafia's stronghold, but as far as I understand, the process is not yet complete, and corruption is still pretty commonplace. I don't know exactly how and why the Mafia formed, but I do know this. Sicilians have been conquered by almost every nation in this part of the world, and have almost never had a functional government. Knowing that they couldn't rely on central authority, locals have for a long time realized that matters had to be taken into their own hands. Why pay taxes to a government who never invested a penny back into your own land? Why not just arrange things a different way without the government with a kind of local brotherhood that has its own police force and its own rules? But as so often happens, when the Mafia grew strong, it became corrupt itself, and part of Palermo's crumbling architecture and nonsensical city planning are a result of Mafia investments, and a few people getting quite rich and quite powerful. I still don't really understand the Mafia or what it does and how it does it, but I think that's also part of its success. It has survived so long because no one has ever really been able to pin it down. It's a nebulous entity, built out of the Sicilian spirit. And what is the Sicilian spirit? What is the spirit of a nation which has changed hands so many times and which owns a history that never quite feels like its own? Without really planning it or meaning to, we managed to stumble into one of Palermo's most beautiful areas. This is the Fontana Pretoria. It was built in Florence in the 1500s before being disassembled into 644 pieces and shipped over to Palermo. It earned the nickname the Fountain of Shame, although that meant different things to different people. For some, it referred to the fact that all the statues are naked, and for others, the fountain itself depicted the corrupt nature of Palermo's government. like just everything is accumulated in this one square, this incredible fountain. There's three different churches surrounding us with all these different styles of architecture coming from all of the different influences in Sicily's past because it's had such a tumultuous history. As the day faded, we wandered into a small street and bought some street food and a beer from the bustling Taverna at Mura. Really good, but so difficult to eat. I am struggling. There is no way to do this gracefully. Locals spilled out onto the street from this extremely popular bar, and we sat back and made new friends. However, we were also aware that this is a hot spot for thieves and swindlers, and we were on our guard. When this man offered to draw Aladino, we refused, because we didn't want to be stuck with some exorbitant sum afterwards. But he didn't listen, and as he drew, we actually got to know he's a talented artist and a really nice guy, and just wanted to draw, didn't want to try to swindle us. He completed this picture of Aladino in record time, and didn't ask for anything in return, but we gave him a few euros anyway. Our third and final day in Palermo was spent on boat projects and markets. I always try to get a few things done when we are in a harbor. So on the list this time was the fan. I installed it yesterday, so Maya is editing happily. So happily with the fan. I am so, so, so happy that we finally have a fan while I edit. Thank you, Dini. And here it is. I just turned it off because it's really loud. But it works. Works so well. And the other thing that has been on the list is our toll rail at the very um, end. So actually, where the stern pulpit is attached um, has come to has started to come loose, and that is because I didn't uh, glue it down. I thought the screws would do the job, 
but uh, they didn't with vibration the screws slowly popped out and now there was no glue to hold it in place i didn't actually disassemble the whole thing i just lifted the stern pulpit a little bit so that i can uh, work here underneath because this is uh, the teak part that was starting to lift and especially here at the corner it was a bit problematic because we have the dock lines here and i didn't want it to snag and completely break or tear it off. I uh, lifted the stern pulpit and then I took the teak, I guess it's called cap rail. Um, I took this one off and now I will actually apply some Sika flex on the underside and mount it. And actually the problem here lies in polyester resin. All the whole tow rail and that is done on many boats is just screwed into plain polyester resin. Polyester resin itself is very very brittle and it crumbles so if you would have the similar thing and you take your tow rail off you see that it's just all cracked and crumbled and it's somehow because of the quantity of screws still held in place but it's better if you can actually uh, glue it down or have some fiberglass uh, where you put the screws in so it actually uh, holds better. As the day wore on, we decided to visit another one of Palermo's famous attractions, Mercato Bellato. Palermo's oldest market, recorded even in the diaries of a 10th century Arab traveler. It's an explosion of smell, sight, and, forgive my pronunciation, abaniate, which is the Sicilian word for the shouts of the vendors to attract you to their stalls. The market exists in a seemingly random sprawl of little streets. I got excited at some of the sites after recognizing them from Anthony Bourdain's episode on Palermo. Who knows who else has visited these streets in the centuries that they've been here. And so we left Palermo feeling like we had fallen in love with the city. You have to enjoy it for the noise and the dirt and the winding streets which curve in any direction because beneath it all is a place of incredible history, unbearable sadness, unbelievable strength, and an undeniable will to enjoy life despite it all. We left Palermo's large harbor around noon, aware of how many other boats have entered and exited this harbor before us. The next stop, Chefalu, but you'll have to wait for the next video to hear about that. As always, a giant thank you to our patrons for making this episode possible. Not only do you provide us with the funds and support necessary, but you also provide us with the motivation and the friendship and the camaraderie necessary to get the motivation to, uh, to make one of these videos every single month. So huge thank you to all of you. And an extra special thank you to these folks who really go out of their way above and beyond every single month to help us make these, these videos a reality. So thank you so much to all of you, and we will see you in the next episode.